Hello, this is Beverly Kersmerzik with Oasis Wealth Design Group. On today's workshop, we're going to be addressing the difference between RRSPs, or Registered Retirement Savings Plans, and the Tax-Free Savings Account, the TFSA. So stay tuned in, grab your workbook. If you don't have it, feel free to click the link below and request it. And uh, watch this quick three-minute video about who we are and why we're here before we dive into the material. See you soon. Who is Oasis Guelph? We are a family business that has been serving Guelph and the surrounding area for over 30 years. This is Tony, owner and founder, and this is me, Beverly. We are a no fee for service office offering full wealth designs. Together we focus on your wealth, not just your financial status. You see, financial planning focuses on your net worth, the bottom line. We focus on wealth designs, which capture your entire state of well-being. Let's address the elephant in the room. What's our business model? We are life insurance brokers and referral sources for many different products and solutions, including insurance, investment management, everything from RSPs to TFSAs, as well as banking solutions, debt solutions, and group benefit strategies. We believe that products, however, are never the solution. Let me put it this way. Most of us, somewhere in our home, have a drawer full of miscellaneous items. Items that at one point were useful and valuable to our lives. However, over time, they have started to collect dust in what we often refer to as our junk drawer. Most new clients we see have a financial junk drawer a filing cabinet, or perhaps just a box of all well-meaning products that at some point were very useful and valuable. However, over time, the way we make decisions and the way we organize often lead to confusion and inefficient use of your hard-earned dollars. Consider playing a game such as chess or Monopoly. How would the game go if you had no game board? Or what about no rule book? How would you know who is winning or losing? The same can be said for our finances. We often have a lot of great pieces, but no game board or rule book. And this is why we use a game board to design your well-being. Using this game board, you can see every financial decision you have made and will make on one page, clear and simple. The model consists of five sections, cash flow, debt, protection, savings, and growth. Every financial product you own fits on this one page model. This allows every financial decision you make to be organized, coordinated, and integrated. Here is another pitfall. Even with the best organization, when's the last time you had all of your sources of advice in the same room at the same time? Never. See us in the middle? That's your personal CFO. We come alongside your family and with the game board, we work together to always find the best design given the resources at hand. But you won't pay us a hefty salary to do it. At Oasis Wealth, we don't just settle for needs and good enough. We believe in your maximum potential. We always seek to maximize your protection, maximize your opportunity for growth using multipliers, and ultimately maximize your guaranteed retirement income. Why? Because when it comes to your finances, failure is not an option. So upgrade your advice today with Oasis Wealth, where your state of well-being is our top priority. And welcome back. So let's dive into our material today with the RSP versus the tax-free savings account. Pull this to the side here. All right. So first of all, let's go for some of the basics. What is an RRSP? It's a retirement savings plan that you establish, the CRA registers, and to which you or your spouse or common law partner are able to contribute. They are deductible contributions that can be used to reduce your taxes in that one year. Any income you earn in the RSP is usually exempt from tax as long as the funds remain in the plan. You generally have to pay tax when you receive payments from the plan. There's a few key notes to point out in there. 
Um, first of all, that it is only tax deductible as you're putting it in, and that there is tax to pay when you receive payments from the plan. There seems to be a missed fallacy sometimes that there will be no taxes to pay when you pull the money out. Um, there always is, so let's go through some of those details. Tax-free savings account, on the other hand, is a way for individuals who are 18 years and older and have a valid SIN number to set money aside tax-free throughout their lifetimes. Contributions to a TFSA are not deductible for income tax purposes. You don't get a tax break like you do in an RSP. And any amount contributed as well as any income earned in the account is generally tax-free even when it's withdrawn. Administrative or other fees in relation to the tax-free savings account and or any interest or money borrowed to contribute to a TFSA are not tax deductible. I'll explain what that means in a few minutes. The characteristics of an RSP. So here they are just a summary and how they work. One, contributions are tax deductible in that one year. In the year in which you turn 71 is the last year you can contribute. You can't contribute past into your retirement years. Maximum contribution is either 18% of your previous year's income, or this year, the maximum of 26,500. You can contribute to your spouse's RSP until the end of the year in which she turns, he or she turns 71. Withdrawals impact on taxes and the benefit programs such as the GST, the Guaranteed Income Supplement, and Old Age Security. So we need to be cognizant of that, that withdrawals from that RSP when we retire do affect these other benefits from the government. Any carry forward of unused contribution room, so if you didn't use it all last year, it will automatically carry forward to the next year and you can catch up then. Financial institutions will withhold tax on withdrawals. Rates are depending on res residency and amount. So to give you an example, if even your working years, you go to take out $10,000 out of an RSP, they will automatically withhold tax on that money. Um, so you need to be aware of that and what those brackets are depending on where you are and how much it is. There is a penalty if you over contribute into an RSP, anything above $2,000. So if your RSP um, maximum for that year is 50,000 and you've put in 52,000, you're still okay. Um, but if you go above that 52 and you will be charged a penalty on that. TFSAs, on the other hand, you must be 18 years old to contribute, but there's no upper age limit. So you can contribute to these well into your retirement, the great legacy tools. Contributions are not tax deductible. So again, you cannot use these as a means of lowering your income tax in the one year. Contribution room accumulates every year, so you can again carry it forward. Withdrawals can be for any reason and are not taxable. Withdrawals are also added back to your contribution room for the following year. So this is a little bit of a misnomer that um, you can take money out of a TFSA, but you can't put it back in, in that allowable room until the following year. So um, to give an example, if somebody has maxed out their tax free savings account and in January, they decide to take out $10,000 for a roof repair or a car purchase, they cannot put that $10,000 back in until the following January. So your contribution room will always be added back, but you cannot put it back in the same year. There is a penalty of 1% per month on the greater excess during that month. There is no $2,000 threshold um, like an RSP for over contributions. Contribution room is the current year's maximum plus contribution rooms from the previous years and withdrawals. So again, you can carry forward a little bit more there. Just like an RSP, you can hold a variety of different investments. Um, a lot of people use these tax-free savings accounts as a savings account, which can be valuable, but they are also um, ideal for investments. Um, you can do a lot more with them. You can use the interest, the dividends, the growth on those investments in multiple ways because you have flexibility. Okay. Pros and cons of an RSP. So let me ask you this. If you went into business with another business partner, and in that turn, you put in $100,000 of your own equity in order to build this company, and partner number two did not put anything in. And yet at the end of the day, when you want to go sell that company, partner two, who doesn't have any equity stake in it, gets to make all the rules of how much you get and how much you can sell for. No one would go into that business deal. And yet this is exactly what happens with an RSP. You put all the money in, you take all the risk, and yet it's CRA 
or the tax people that determine how much you get to take out and when. So just some considerations there. But there, as every product is there, out there in the world, we are firm believers here at Oasis Wealth that every product has pros and cons, and we need to be honest and forefront about each of those. The advantages are obviously that they are tax deductible, so you can use them in the current year to reduce your current income tax holdings. Unused contribution room is carried forward, great point. Over, you can contribute up to $2,000 without penalty. Disadvantages, there's taxes on your withdrawals. Do we have any idea what the tax rates will be between now and age 65? Especially some in their younger years, if you are living under this fallacy that you will be in a lower tax bracket when you retire, I am here to say that you may not. And if that is the only reason why you are using these accounts, I would think again as to what your strategy is. Just because it says retirement in the account doesn't mean that it's the only option. Okay? Your force of withdrawals after 71, which can put some people in a difficult tax situation. People don't understand that these withdrawal minimums that they have to take out at 71 could actually affect their ability to keep the money for as long as they want. Right? Uncertainty regarding future tax rates, we just talked about that a little bit, and withdrawals may trigger a clawback on certain government benefits. We'll see an example of that. The advantages and disadvantages of tax-free savings accounts. Advantages are that withdrawals can be any time for any purpose. Tax-free growth on the investments, so there's no taxes to pay. No taxes on withdrawals. Withdrawals can be replaced in future years. And carry forward or unused contribution room keeps going forward. There's no upper age limit on contributions or forced withdrawals at any time. Withdrawals do not impact government benefits. They don't show up on your taxes. They're not going to claw back your old age security or your HSD and all of these other benefits. Okay? They can also be used as collateral for a loan. Now, it's not used very often, um, but this could be a very strategic tool um, depending on where your wealth is at and the advantages and some opportunities that might be available to you. Disadvantages are, there's not too many to be honest, um, but that the contributions are not tax deductible, so they will not decrease your tax in today's year. There are penalties on any excess contribution. There's no wiggle room like a, an RSP. And there are lower maximum annual contribution amounts than an RSP. You, it's not based on how much you make like an RSP, so the, there's just a set maximum for everybody in Canada and they are typically lower than most people's RSP contribution room, so you can't put as much in. When should we use a tax-free savings account? Let's think about this. One, when you don't have enough emergency savings. If you put all of your money into an RSP, and then your car breaks down, and you've got no emergency cash, what are you doing? You're either doing one of two things. One, you're using a high interest credit card or a line of credit. Or number two, you're pulling out of your RSP and paying the taxes. So the money you put into the RSP to get a tax break on, you're just gonna pay back to the government. Kind of a uh, funny way of doing things. So when we don't have enough emergency savings, we wanna be using a tax-free savings account first because at least it offers that flexibility. If you expect your marginal tax rate to be the same or higher when you withdraw the funds. So like we mentioned, especially if you are more than, I don't know, three, four years from retirement, you have no idea what those tax rates will be. And if we think about it, if inflation is even calculated in part of your game plan, if we're in our 30s or 40s and we've got 20 years to retirement, our money that we're making today, what is it gonna be worth? What do we need to actually be able to pull out to live on in 20, 30 years? Think about that, at 3%, we're gonna double that. So $100,000 today is not gonna, is, you need a $200,000 when you get there. So who's to say that with inflation and whatnot, that there's, there's no reason why that you may be in a lower tax rate. It's possible, but I work with dreamers. We work with people that achieve, strive to achieve their maximum fulfillment, not just what they might need, okay? You use a TFSA when you need flexibility in how to access and use the funds. You don't like to pay taxes on withdrawals. If you've ever talked to anybody in their 60s or 70s and are starting to use their RSPs, they're not loving the taxes that they're paying. When you're over age 71, great tool um, for those who are over their retirement age who either want to draw down their risk, get rid of their retirement accounts because there's too much tax and put them into a tax-free savings account, but they just have excess cash or windfall or selling a property. Great place because anything, yeah, there's no age limit on that. 
and when you don't want clawback of the government benefits and retirement. So we're going to show you an example of that. And options for future collateral. All that to say, if there's only one thing you get from this presentation, please hear this. Only and only fund your RSP if you have enough liquid savings for a minimum of three months living expenses. You have proper protection in place. You have an appropriate amount and type of debt. And you're in the habit of saving 15 to 20% of your income. If that is you, and you have met all four rules of the first four rules of your financial stability, then it's advantageous to fund your RSP. Even then, here are the circumstances where it is most advantageous to most people, okay? You've had a big tax event that year, such as a sale of a rental property or sale of other taxable assets. There are, there are gonna be circumstances in your life where in that one year, there's gonna be a lot of capital gains or there's gonna be some big tax event and putting some of those dollars into an RSP just up to the point of lowering that tax bill so that it's not, um, not inefficient could be a good use of those RSPs. So save your room for events like that. If you're contributing to the RSP, decreases your taxable income and increases your other immediate government tax-free benefits. For example, the child tax benefit, up to what's realistic. So we're gonna go through a key example and show you some numbers. But if you are in your young years and you have young children at home, you have, there's an immediate tax benefit, an immediate tax-free cash from the government if your income is lower. So in those years, again, if you've met all three, all the four rules um, of financial stability there, then it may make sense to put money into an RSP so that you can get a higher immediate tax-free benefit up to what's realistic. When you know 100% that you'll be in a lower tax bracket when you take it out, okay? So this is where if we have a few years before retirement, or even 10 years, and we could see forecasting where we're going, how things are going. Now, tax rate could still change, um, but if we could honestly say that, you know, there is a very good chance that you'll be in a lower tax bracket, let's move some money from Exhibit A, let's say a tax-free savings account, into an RSP because we have a good, very good likelihood that we're going to be in a lower tax bracket when we take it out, then that makes sense. Okay, but strategically, not just willy-nilly put money into an account just because it says retirement in it. Finally, this is a rule across the board here at Oasis Wealth. Do not put more than half your allocated savings into an RSP. For example, if you as a family could only save 10% of your income, and I applaud you for saving 10% of your income, no more than 5% of that should be going into an RSP. That includes what you get off your gov off your company match, okay? It, here's how we can reduce taxes for higher earners in using these strategies strategically. If you personally are making $100,000 a year, then it may be advantageous to lower your net income by using an RSP. For example, if you're making $100,000 a year, no other deductions, no kiddos, no, no spouse, any of that kind of stuff, you would owe approximately $24,400 in taxes. That's 24% average tax rate and 37 marginals, when the top dollars at 37, okay? If you reduce your net income below 85, you reduce your marginal tax rate to 29, so 7.5% less, and you could defer, not save, but defer $5,800 in tax. So example, if you put $15,000 that year into an RSP, because that reduces your income from 100 to 85, you could reduce your taxes by $5,800 for that year. So it could make sense for the higher earners um, to be putting money in just to get them just to that next marginal tax, tax bracket lower, okay? But there's things to note on this. You still can only use the strategy if you have satisfied rules one through four. You only employ this strategy in February once your income is calculated and your CFO or us run your tax assumptions. What does this mean? This is a key um, point that we want to get across. If you are wanting to put money to an RSP, the ideal strategy 
is that you're putting money into something else, tax free savings account, non-registered account, some other place, earn some interest, that's fine. Earn some, you know, get some gains. But then in February, after you've got received, either received your T4, or at least we have your end of year pay stub, so we know your income for the year, then let's run your tax assumptions and let's determine exactly how much should go in there to be useful, but not put us into a tax rate risk in the future. Make sense? So save it into a TFSA until February and then transfer to an RSP contribution before the deadline because you have so much first. Once you've considered all the factors, don't just assume an RSP will be the best strategy. Then this is a key point that people don't understand sometimes when, when Traditional advisors are taking a look at, okay, an RSP is a great way to go. Yay. A lot of times it's assumed that the refund you get goes back into that RSP to pay for the exit taxes. So the ideal is if we're going to do this and it makes sense, then that refund that you get should go into a tax free savings account or a non registered account. That way, when you pull out the RSP, you're taking a kick, a big hit. You have a big loss on that account when you go to pull it out. Then you have another bucket of money that will help you to replenish that and pay off the taxes. Here is the math. Now, people always tell me, but I could save so much more of them in an RSP because I'm going to get tax deductions. So I'm going to have more to spend. So, of course, I'm going to earn more and my account's going to be bigger if I use an RSP versus a TFSA. Let's check it out. If we're going to rely on math, then we need to talk math. Okay? RSP. Put $6,000 a year in over 30 years at a 25% tax rate to withdraw. Okay, so we're in a low tax rate when we withdraw. You have tax deductibility as your savings, you have more to save. There's no tax on the growth, tax free when you're growing, and we assume a 5% rate of return. The balance after 30 years is 418,000. Congratulations. However, we have to pay our taxes. So whether you pay it, every year or whether the lump sum tax rate is either way take away your 25 percent tax and you're left at the bottom with the 313,000. okay so let me ask you this too if i could tell you the exact date that your investment for your retirement portfolio was going to take the largest hit of its life would you want to know because i can tell you right now it's the day you take that first dollar out you take that first dollar out, you may not immediately see it, but you have just taken a 20 to 30% loss on every single dollar you pull out because of taxes. Take the taxes back. There's no cost recovery there. Consider that. Tax free savings count. So let's compare apples to apples. You're saving with after tax dollars, so you only have 4,500 to save. So again, this is assuming that if we're putting $6,000 into an RSP, it's because we took the tax refund that we got and we're putting money in there and put it back into the account okay so if a tfsa you don't have as much to put in because you didn't get a tax refund so we only have 4500 over 30 years but there's no taxes on withdrawal but there's also no tax deductibility no taxes on the growth and a five percent rate of return at the end of 30 years you come out the exact same so the only way this works is if we know 100% that in the years you're putting money to an RSP, first off, you're taking the refund and putting it back in. You're not taking a vacation. You're not paying off debts. You're putting it back in. And number two, that we know 100% that we're going to be in a lower tax bracket. You're going to end up being in a higher one when you retire, even for a year or two. You have just taken significant loss. And no one in their right mind would go into a market, put their money into a portfolio, knowing that the minute they take that money out, they would take a 20 to 30% loss. That's like feeling 2008 all over. And yet we do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. What's the probability of success? Who puts away all of their tax refund? Anybody? Or has it become a sales tactic as a vacation strategy rather than a retirement one? I see this all the time. Top six things that Canadians do with their tax refund. So what if you do get one? What do most people do? They buy something they need. They pay down another bill. They save for a rainy day. They pay off their credit cards. 
they splurge on something fun, or they take a vacation. You notice how none of those top six things are put the money back into their RSP? And yet you've been trained to think that your RSP is going to succeed because you do that. When it pays to use an RSP, so let's see a few examples here. So we've, I've alluded to it that if you have young children at home and you have an immediate tax benefit of tax-free money coming into your account that can pay for diapers and childcare and all that stuff, then it may make sense to reduce your income. Child tax benefit. So I'll give you an idea. The child tax benefit begins to be reduced once a family reaches an adjusted family net income above 30,000, okay? The amount that's gonna depend, that is gonna adjust down will depend on your income and the amount of children. So let's take an example. A mom and dad are both 35 years old, family net income of 70,000. They've got two children, both under the age of five, okay? If they do not contribute to an RSP and they keep their income at 70,000, they would have an annual benefit of $8,230. Yeah, $8, if they put $6,000 into an RSP, the benefit would increase to 8839. So a difference of six, $609. So my question at that point would be, is it worth the $6,000 you had to find in your cash flow to put into there? to have locked up, you can't have access, and if you have access, you gotta pay taxes and all of these repercussions, okay? For the difference of $600 a year. Now for some families that are, expect, are you know, it depends. So this is, there, there may be a situation where that makes sense, but it needs to be reviewed carefully before you put the money in, okay? On the flip side, when you retire, you could lose multiple benefits by having only RSPs and CPP as income. For example, you have an income of 49,121, okay? So CPP maximums, 19,121, and RSP of 20 grand, and 5,000 of property tax expenses, okay? Because that's how you get some of these credits is either by your rent expenses or your property taxes. So let's assume some property tax. You could have GST of $376 a year. If the income was a TFSA instead, Okay, so again, same amount of income, 19,000 from CPP and only 20,000 from RSP, you would pay $4,331 less tax, you would get GST of 443, and you would also add on a trillion benefit of 1521. That increased your tax-free benefits from the government by over 500% and reduced your taxes to zero. Which scenario would you rather be? Essentially, it all boils down to in retirement, that equals $5,000 a month, more spendable income. What could you do with $500 a month more than your neighbor? Okay. Plus, if you plan on earning a lot in retirement, you'll avoid the OAS clawback too. You make over a certain threshold, they'll start taking back your old age security. So another, another aspect to consider. Did you also know that having too much in RSPs can also affect the kind of care you get when you're in the late stages of life? Long-term care can be subsidized by the government if your reportable income is low enough. So again, this income that's reported on your tax return. If you qualify, you could get a subsidy of up to $1,800 and change a month to help you pay for basic long-term care accommodations. However, if your reported net income is too high, you will have no help from the government. How do we report lower income? We take it from tax-free or tax-advantageous accounts, not 100% taxable accounts like an RSP. Guaranteed income supplement. So we've hinted a little bit at this. The guaranteed income supplement provides a monthly non-taxable benefit in addition to old age security who have a low income and are living in Canada. So when you go to retire, if all of your income besides CPP and old age are tax free or tax advantageous, such as equity from a home, cash value life insurance, non-registered investments, a lot of other places. It is possible to be collecting from all of these stores and get the supplement. What does that mean? That means that you could be pulling equity from a home, 20 grand from a life insurance policy, 20 grand from a TFSA, Put a graph from a non-registered investment, and to you, you're making $100,000 that year. But to the government, it makes it look like they're making 18, 19,000. 
you may be eligible for a supplement. Congratulations. It's all about strategy, folks. Another thing to consider about an RSP, you need to consider that if you want a lump sum in retirement, what is that going to cost you? If you needed a $40,000 lump sum for a car purchase or a medical emergency because things happen as we get older, okay? Option one, you could pull it out of an RSP, but you would put you, likely put you in a higher tax bracket because that counts as all income for that year. At a 30% tax, you need to withdraw over $57,000 to get 40 net to buy that car or to pay for that medical expense. On the flip side, TFSA, 40 grand, you take out 40 grand. Clean, simple, done. Oh, and you can put the 40 grand back in the next year. Doesn't matter how old you are, okay? Here's the ideal retirement. So if the RSP was designed for retirement, and I would agree it can be a tool, then we need to consider the ideal retirement and how that fits in. Here is what it looks like. Let me move my screen over here. The ideal retirement essentially has us having multiple bags of money, okay? So we use a model here at Oasis Wealth that allows us to see every aspect of your life on one page. We wanna make sure that you've got multiple, multiple ways to pull money out. You're not reliant on one single account. You need to understand that the RIF rules will eat away at your risk of running out of money, okay? If you need a refresher on that, go back to our Don't Worry, Retire Happy conversation. There's a whole aspect in there that we talk about the fact that the RIF minimums that you have to take out on a year-by-year -year basis completely counter counterdict the rules of retirement success. Okay. This is what it boils down to. The financial industry will tell us that we can withdraw 4% of our portfolios on a year-by-year -year basis in retirement and have a very good chance of not running out of money based on ups and downs of the market and all that kind of thing. But the RIF minimum at age 71 is 5.28. So wait, if the financial experts tell us we can only take out 4% and not risk running out, how can the government require us to take out more than is even safe? Okay. So the ideal retirement is like this, all non-taxable income. That way you maximize all your other retirement benefits. That's number one. So as much as we can, we want all the income coming to you to be non-taxable. Number two is you want a non-market, stock market correlated bag of money. Okay, so again, check out our Retire Happy conversation if you need a refresher on that. But what this means is that if all of your money in retirement is in a volatile market, so it's in the market, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, the reality is that you cannot afford those downs in retirement. So if we have an alternative strategy where we have another bag of money that's not dependent on the market, that's not going to go up and down, that has some guarantees on it, then it will make your retirement not only a lot happier, but last a lot longer. Okay. So what if you're already retired? So if you're watching this presentation, you're like, wait, I'm already retired. What is this? How can I be using these RSPs, the TFSA, all this kind of lingo, okay? You can still take advantage of a TFSA. You can employ a taxable to tax-free estate strategy. You ready for this? How? Someone is 71 years old, okay? So you can't put any more money into a, into a RIF, so let's use a TFSA. At age 71, the RSP count is worth 300,000. Your minimum withdrawals at 71 are 5.28 to start. Now, that percentage goes up every year, okay? Keep that in mind. So that means in year one, you have to take out 15,840. Assuming a 20% tax bracket, and that's accurate up to about $46,000 income today, you're gonna pay about $3,000 in tax and take home about 12,600. Assuming you have CPP and old, age, old age, OAS maximums, so let's assume, an even 20 grand, total taxable income will be 35,840. So we took this amount that you have to take out from your RIF, add it to CPP, you're at $35,000. Make sense? Then you could take out an additional $10,000 from your RIF account out of this 3,000 every year, pay 20% tax, and put as much as possible into a TFSA. The rest they could spend or acquire some final expense life insurance. Okay, so again, this has to be analyze with someone that knows the taxes and knows your situation, um, like us, because you need to analyze also that $10,000 that you can take out, yes, you're still gonna be in the 20% tax bracket, but we need to make sure it doesn't claw back other benefits. So it needs to be weighed out. But 
someone, if you're making $35,000, $40,000 in retirement, you could go up to as much as the next tax bracket before you go over that 20%, withdraw it today, pay your taxes and put it into a tax-free savings account or put it into some final expense life insurance that you're gonna want eventually anyhow. This way you've taken the pay, pay the tax bill now rather than have a big tax bill when you die, okay? Here is a summary of that. If you have no tax-free savings account, you have, have $300,000 in an RSP or a RIF is what it turns into, and the account holder dies, there could be as much as $135,000 tax to pay. Even with only $100,000 left in the account 10 years later, let's say you spend it, you still could have a tax bill close to $37,000 on $100,000. Again, biggest single loss in one day in your portfolio. You could save your, th your family thousands in final taxes. If we use a TFSA and we transfer a little bit of the RIF to the TFSA each year, up to the individual's next tax bracket, pay 20 to 25% tax on the withdrawals today, rather than 45% at death. You still have full access to the funds if you need them. However, it makes for much easier transfer of assets. Something to note as well, RSPs and tax-free savings account both have beneficiaries. This means that in the event of death of the, of the holder of the account, um, it would either transfer to the spouse, but if there is no spouse in a beneficiary's name like the children, it bypasses the lawyers, the wills, and the probate fees. Okay, so key to note that they both have those, but use those. Don't forget those. Don't let it just go through your estate and your will, okay? Here's the summary. Consider all the facts before contributing to an RSP. Don't just assume. Consider maxing out your TFSA first and then review every January and February to see if an RSP contribution makes sense for your income and tax bracket. Don't just assume, review it after you know what your income is gonna be for that year. Don't be fooled. Just because it says retirement account doesn't mean it's the only way to save for retirement. Finally, have a CFO on your side. Have someone that can walk you through all the options, the pros, the cons, if the person that you're dealing with only talks about the advantages of that product or the advantages of that portfolio, be warned. There are advantages and disadvantages to everything in life. And yet somehow we know that and yet we still get fooled into thinking that everything that someone's gonna promise us on a financial basis is true. There are disadvantages to every product. You need to be aware and exploring those just as much as the advantages, right? So that's all that I wanted to address today. If you have any questions or anything that you wanted to, um, that you would like to address, either make a comment below, send us an email, contact the office, the contact information will be listed on, will be posted up here in just a moment. Otherwise, thank you for listening in today. We hope you have a wonderful day. And here at Oasis Wealth, we just want you to know that failure is not an option when it comes to your finances. So uh, visit us today so we can foolproof your life. Have a great day.